This is the Morning Swim Show for December 31st, New Year's Eve 2009. This is the fourth and final show this week where we look back on the most memorable moments of the year as covered here on the Morning Swim Show. So far we look back at the high-tech suit controversy, swimmers making a name outside the pool, and yesterday was our most controversial swimmer of the year episode. Today, a glimpse of the global reach we had on the show this year. We are Swimming World after all, so we make an effort to have big name swimmers from every corner of the globe here on the Morning Swim Show. And with the help of Skype technology, we succeeded. So today we're going to show a clip from various interviews we did with big name swimmers in different continents, starting with Canada's Anna Mae Pierce. Would you have traded the world record for a gold medal in Rome? You know, I've been asked that a lot, and... Oh, uh, I thought it was the first. No. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Because, I mean, a world record is the world record, and it's pretty amazing to have. And at the same time, a silver is great, but it kind of sucks, you know, missing out on the gold. You know, I don't think so. Because I still have a lot to learn, and getting to that gold medal, you know, you really want everything to be perfect. And then you really know that you've deserved it. You've done everything you can. And so, no, I got a lot more chances for a gold medal. Well, plus that world record, I mean, it could be decades before that thing's broken now that the suits are going away. Doubtful. There's no way that either myself or my main competitors are going to let that stand. <laughs> you think? Yeah. In November, we talked to Australian sprinter Eamon Sullivan, who had missed the World Championships with an injury, then later had to have an emergency appendectomy. Do you consider yourself injury prone? Yeah, yeah extremely. The, I, I can't imagine how frustrating that must be for you to, to never, as you said, feel like you're just uh, that one. When's the last time you felt like you were 100% at a really important meet? Um, I don't know, I can't really remember the last time I didn't carry an injury into a meet or, or have, a, have a pretty pretty average lead up. I think Olympics was one of the better ones I've had and, um, and probably the, the Olympic trials in Australia last year before that was probably, it was probably my, my best year as far as injuries went but um, there was still a few hiccups along the way. Were you mad that you weren't the first guy to break 47 in that 100 free? Uh, a little bit. Um, you know, it's it's not one of those things that really keeps me awake at night. But uh, it would have been nice. But it was pretty close in that semi final at the Olympics. But um, yeah, it's it's not something that yeah bothers me. It's it's a shame that I didn't. But um, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to have a crack at it. We had breaststroker Cameron Vanderberg on the show several times from him from his home in South Africa. You know, a lot of people before Rome just knew you as a 50 guy, but you got the bronze in the 100, so obviously now your name is in the mix as one of the best long course breaststrokers as well. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, you know I, I said um, when I changed coach, you know, I told my coach and I sat down and I said, listen, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Obviously, you know, the 50 has been really great and, and I've achieved a lot and, and um, it's given me a lot of opportunities and... Um, but, you know, I do want to start changing and, and, you know, I want to go for 100 and even 200. And, you know, it would still take me perhaps, you know, I'd say maybe another two years to get, you know, competitive with the 200 because obviously I need to build up a bit more of a base. And But the 100, uh, it's come on really well. And, and, you know, I was actually even surprised myself doing that well. Um, you know, I knew that I had the speed and, and I could take it out and, you know, just to hang on, can I say, you know, I think uh, the new training is helping a lot with that and, and you know, my coach, obviously being Kitajima's old coach, has a lot of tricks and, and a lot of uh, knowledge on that kind of thing. So, you know, and just, I mean, we've only been training for about four months now and, and uh, already, I mean, we've we've seen a great improvement on my 100 and um, I would have loved to have swam the 200, uh, but I mean, just to give an example, just from the training and the recovery work, um, you know, every time that I swam in Rome, the hundred from the, the heat to the semi to the final, I improved and uh, the time, you know, and, and my recovery was a lot less. And, and, you know, before, I don't think I would have managed that because I didn't do enough yardage. So, um, you know, I have to take my hand off to him and, and I'm being really surprised with my performance and, and my condition. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, hopefully, obviously, the goal is, uh, you know, in, in London to become the gold medalist in, in the hundred and then the two hundred would be great as well. 
Now, South America may not have a ton of swimming talent right now, but what they lack in quantity, Brazil's Cesar Cielo makes up for in quality. How often do you hold your gold medal? I mean, do you have it uh, somewhere where you can see it every day, or do you keep it in a bank vault or something? No, I actually put it in, uh, in the bank. Uh, me and my parents, we decided that, that that would be the best for me as being here in the U.S., I would be really worried, you know, about my medals and wherever they're going or where they are. So we decided to put in the bank uh, just to keep it safe and to, to keep my head, you know, just uh, with no bad thoughts about it. I, I'll, I'll, I think it would disturb me a lot if they, I mean, disappear or get stolen. So we just decided to do that and I can just <laughs> focus on my training here. Do you ever miss it? I mean, do you ever wake up and say, oh, I wish I saw my gold medal today? Uh, not really. Uh, I, it's good to have them, but uh, the, the feeling, you know, and knowing that you won the Olympics, it's is the most important thing for me. You know, it's just it's just great to to watch the video and uh, to talk with Brad about it. So it's not real, like really the medal that is the big deal, but you know, the feeling and uh, the knowledge of of being an Olympic champion is just great. Finally, we did several interviews with European stars this year, including an interview with Francis Fred Bousquet, in which he foreshadowed that he was about to become the first man to break 21 seconds in the long course 50 freestyle. 21-4, did you see that coming? Uh, not really. Uh, I was feeling pretty bad before the meet, but when the race came up, I just wanted to go fast and touch the world first. Okay, well, how do you explain that, though? Because, you know, if everybody wanted to do that, they'd do it every single swim. But, I mean, what is it about you that enables you to swim fast? It, it seems like every single meet you go to. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I just came back to Auburn about a month ago, and uh, as soon as I started back training with Brett, uh, my confidence just went up, uh, all the way to the roof, I would say. And he just made me believe in me and believe that I can swim fast any time I want. So, do you ha do you try and you know taper for meets like this, or you know rest a little bit, or are you just basically going in and swimming? No, I I'm not. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm tapering for any meet like that. I'm actually getting ready for French nationals next month. So right now we just in the middle of very hard practice and heavy weight lifting and stuff like that. So we just rest the day before the meet, pretty much when we travel. That's how, how much rest we get, and that's, that's it. Okay, so logical thinking then says that, okay, if you're going 21-4 when you're training hard, when you're at peak taper and feeling as good as you possibly can, I mean, are you going to break a world record here this year? Uh, I mean, I'd like to, but I don't know if it's, it's going to happen. I just hope that it's going to happen. That's my goal. we see. And that is it for our show today and our week look back at the most memorable stories of 2009 as covered here on the Morning Swim Show. Sure hope you enjoyed it. Have a happy new year. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.